If you ask all professors in philosophy in the Netherlands what book everyone should read, there's just one woman in their top ten. And to be honest, it's only one woman in their top uh, 30. Do you have any idea who this woman is? No? I might help you by telling her that she also wrote about, wrote about heroes. She is... Um, I'll try. Yeah. It's Hannah Arendt. Let me see. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's Hannah Arendt. And uh, she told in her book, The Human Condition, which is the book that the philosophers mentioned, that a hero is everyone who discloses herself or her himself in public. So you don't need any heroic qualities. It's just that you disclose who you are or tell your story in public. And uh, she inspires me a lot because she's not only an extraordinary a political uh, philosopher, but also someone who interferes in the public sphere. And she is very concerned about the public sphere and how we keep it human. Um, I'm here to talk about my uh, recent book. I'm indeed a professor in philosophy, one of the persons who filled in this list. And um, the book is called Ritme op zoek naar een terugkerende tijd. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just in Dutch. Uh, but if you translate it, it is rhythm in search for a returning time. Um, my talk is about uh, three issues. The first is um, the loss of social rhythms in the 24-7 society. The second issue is the consequences of this loss. And the third issue is that uh, I would like to provide you some proposals how we could solve these problems. Um, let me start with the first issue, the loss of life rhythms in 24-7 society. This 24-7 society has a kind of ideology that forces you to be active 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, and 52 weeks a year. And the causes of this lo loss are uh, various. Uh, for example, uh, globalization is one of the reasons. We have become part of a global time. And that global time is in fact a timeless time because it's disconnected from our local time. And this global time is produced uh, already by radio and television, but um, the new ICT and new social media have also contributed very active, effectively to this um, process of going to the 24-7 society. A last factor is the, the changing roles between men and women. Women have massively entered the labor market and men are more and more willing to take care for their children. And this combination of work and stress gives work, work and care gives a certain stress and it's called combination stress. And policy makers uh, have the idea that you can solve this by making all time flexible. So they propose flexible working times, flexible school times, flexible uh, opening times of the shop, and so on. What do we lose if we uh, leave all the social rhythms? First of all, we lose the ebb and flow of activity and rest. The self-evident difference between days and nights, between weekdays and weekend days, gets lost. Uh, we also lose the meaning of time. Our grand-grand-grandfathers, far away, have invented a cycle of seven days. 
six days of work and one day of rest. And they also invented names for the days. So they named all the days. And with the, the, this naming, the days got a meaning. So we all know what a Saturday night fever is. And we all know why we don't like Mondays. We also lose time efficiency. We have the feeling that it's more efficient to be flexible, but I'm not so sure if that's true. Because um, social rhythms are very efficient ways to order time. Um, if you have to make an appointment for every meeting that you have, it's terribly time consuming, as every flexible worker already knows. Um, we also lose social cohesion, because social rhythms help us to celebrate together, to work together, to know what times we are quiet and what times we are busy. So we take the risk that we all become a bunch of noisy atoms. What could we do to keep certain social rhythms? I don't want to go back to the 1950s. I think we should skip all those traditional ideas that men work full-time and women only part-time. Um, we should look for new rhythms. And I'll do just some proposals and I hope you'll add other ones. For example, it could be that a break in the middle of the week is very good for our energy. Rather than working five weeks uh, uh, continuously, it might be that having, for example, the Wednesday afternoon as a fixed um, half day to take a rest so that you get more energy. Um, and I would also say that rather than working continuously, um, it could be, or to be honest, history has already shown that having a fixed recharge day, uh, a Sunday or a Saturday, but could also be another day, is very, very good for our health. Um, rather than making all times flexible, I would suggest that we make shifts for early birds and shifts for night owls. You can choose, choose between the two, but if you choose, it's a fixed rhythm. And maybe an answer to the, the speaker before me, um, I would also suggest that we stimulate men and women that they work less hours in their 20s and their 30s and more hours in their 40s and 50s. And uh, that would give them the opportunity to combine work and uh, care uh, without too much stress. And it also gives them a career perspective after their 50s and their 60s. So, in conclusion, let us be aware of the risks of the 24-7 society. And let us be aware what it does to our public sphere, like Hannah Arendt said, if we skip all those social rhythms. And I'd like to leave you with a quote of Hippocrates, the ancient Greek physician who wrote, all of human life stands in need of the proper rhythm. And what the proper rhythm is, is up to you. And I would say, like Hannah Arendt did, be a hero and share your proper rhythm with others in the public sphere. Thank you very much. <laughs>